The Estes Viking model rocket is one of the most versatile on the market today. And if you've never built one of these, I highly recommend doing so. In fact, build a few of them because, as you can see in the instructions here, there are lots of different configurations. So you can build this as a 3-fin, a 4-fin, or a 5-fin rocket. And the fins are such that you can turn them in just about any direction and they'll still be stable. Now they do recommend that you always keep your fins going all in the same direction um, to maintain, maintain stability, but there are even possibilities of using multiple fin configurations on the same rocket. And they can still be stable, although you do need to make sure and check that before flying them. So there are at least 18 different configurations, more than what are shown here. But what if you had two Viking rocket kits? Well, my local hobby store a little while ago had a clearance sale on the educator packs of Viking kits. And so it was 12 kits to a box, and each box was less than $15. So I was paying about $1.20, $1.50 per rocket, and now I've got a whole bunch of rockets. Well, I am going to use some of them for education, but the thought occurred to me that we can actually do some experimentation with these as well. So in the next several videos, I'm going to look at different ways that we can combine two Viking model rocket kits to make a single rocket. Now anytime you do this, you don't have the guaranteed stability that a pre-manufactured kit has. So you want to make sure and check very closely the stability of your rocket before you fly these. All of these that I'm going to show in this series of videos have been flown artificially in RockSim and have been shown to be stable. However, always check this yourself. Differences in building techniques, in glue and paint and such could result in different results than what I got. Now, I am going to limit myself to what's in each kit. I'm not going to bring in any outside parts with one exception. Okay, the kits come with streamer recovery, and you would think, well, okay, if I put both streamers in for a bigger kit, that'll still work. And in some cases it does, but not in all. In a few cases, the rocket may be heavy enough, or it may just simply be kind of awkwardly gangly and have lots of parts sticking out, that streamer recovery will not bring it back safely. And I will show a few instances where I replace the streamer with a parachute. But otherwise, we're going to go with the stock parts. Now, one other thing to be aware of, depending on how old your kits are and how long they've been sitting on the shelves, they may come with a plastic nose cone, which is the modern one, or a balsa nose cone, which is found in older kits. Now, as I was going through my kits, I actually found several that still had the balsa nose cone. For the most part, this won't make any difference, but again, be sure to check stability because, as you can see, they are of slightly different lengths, and they're also slightly different masses. So always check that before you fly. And with that, we'll proceed to this build. In this build, we're going to use most of the components from one kit and just a few from the other. And the way this is going to work is this is going to look more like a space fighter, if you like. And I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to call this the, the Star Viking or the Outrigger Viking. But what we'll do is take one of the body tubes, cut it in half, and then those two halves will lay alongside the main body tube and look like auxiliary engines or jet engines, however you want to do it. And then um, the fins will need a total of six. So you'll need all of one fin card here, and then one from another. And these are going to go on the two outside tubes. The inner tube here, the main uh, airframe tube, will not have any fins on it. Each of the uh, two outrigger tubes here will have a three-fin configuration using the 
um, fin like this. So it'll be the, the inward kind of long and tight fin there. Uh, those will go on three to a tube and they'll be canted such that um, they'll join or nearly join at the top over the main tube, top and bottom. And then one will be sticking out uh, horizontally. And if that sounds confusing, it will become clear as we go along here. So first thing I'm going to do is go through and cut out the fins. And as I said, we'll need um, all of one set and then one from another. And then we'll cut the tube in half. Okay, so we need to cut our tube in half next. And so if we measure this, it is a 22 centimeter tube. So I am going to measure 11 centimeters. And make a mark there. And then we'll cut this in half. I'm going to go ahead and use the Estes tube cutter guide. Go through the trouble of buying these things, you may as well use them. Alright, so I'll put that right on the mark. Just a little bit. And then clamp it down. And then all I have to do is cut around, bracing the knife against the guide. And so when this is assembled, it's going to be like this, and then we'll have the fins sticking out horizontally, and then we'll also have a fin on each of the outer tubes, and they'll be canted inward. And so they'll almost touch over the main body tube. Now if you want here to add a, a little more detail, um, you could cut the forward part of the two outrigger tubes at an angle, and so they would kind of be, have, be slanted inward where you have the, the top edge still against here, and then um, say a 45 degree angle would put the, the bottom edge down there. Or you can leave it like this. I'm going to go ahead and um, angle mine so that they're cut at 45 degrees. And something we're going to want to do here um, is so that everything lines up. First thing I'm going to do is put a line all the way down this tube on either side. And then I'll also put a line all the way down each of my outrigger tubes and where that line meets the edges here, that's where I'll cut my angle. And so when we're ready to assemble all this, we'll line up all of the lines. Now, if you are going to paint the outrigger part a different color than the main body tube, you may want to do that before we attach these. Okay, so these, after I cut them, we'll put the fins on and then um, glue the whole thing together. If you want to make these a different color, go ahead, put the fins on, paint it, uh, but you're going to want to either mask the area where that line is, because that's where we're going to need to glue it, um, or you're going to have to come back after you've painted it and just scrape away the paint with your hobby knife or with some sandpaper. Okay. Either way, you'll need some bare surface there in order for the glue to stick to put the whole thing together. All right, I decided to go with angled intakes here. And I simply did this on a little hobby miter saw. And it left the edges a little bit rough. And so I can just go ahead and gently sand those. And here I'm just getting the shape all nice and even, all the way around there. And 
Okay, and now what I'm going to do is apply a little bit of super glue to the edges to harden those up, and that way I can shave off or sand off the, the little fibers and such that are coming up on the edges. Okay, so here you want a nice runny super glue. And you can pretty much just touch it to the edge and it'll wick itself in. Okay, and we don't want too much on there. So after it's soaked for a couple of seconds. I'm going to go here and wipe off the excess, preferably without sticking my fingers together. Just like that. And then I'll do the same thing here to the other one. Again, we don't want any ridges or anything like that, so wipe off the excess here. And then I'll just hit this with a little bit more sanding paper after the super glue is thoroughly dried. And we have a couple of relatively easy tasks to do while that super glue dries. And one is to assemble the nose cone. All right. And if you've been following these videos, you should be a pro at this by now. So we're just going to run a bead of plastic cement here around the inside. And just pop that base piece on, give it a little twist. And we can set it aside. And then the other thing we need to do is put in the engine block right here. So we need to measure on our spacer half a centimeter. And then we'll get our glue. And as I've done in earlier videos. Right, I'm going to use my spacer here as a guide, so I'm going to put my thumbnail there at the mark we just made. Get some glue on the applicator. All right, and then choosing one end as the aft end, I'm just going to stick this in, rotate it around in there, and bring it back out. And then, pop in the engine block, All right, and then get our engine spacer here, slide that in to the mark, and then draw it back out. And now this can be put aside to dry. Now to mark our two outrigger lines, we'll use the four fin guide here, and then we're just going to do two opposite sides. So one there. And one here. Alright, and then using your line guide or a door frame, we want to extend this line about two-thirds of the way up. is each of our outriggers will be half the length. So we need a little bit more than half there. So that we can still see them. And do the same thing here. Alright, 
So we have two 180 degree apart lines there. For our outrigger tubes, we need to estimate approximately where the tip is. Just be about here. And here I'm going to run that all the way down. And then I'm also going to mark this. I'm going to bring it around the edge, make a little mark there, and then make a little mark on the inside, just a little one there. Um, and I'll be able to use that to help line up with the other tube here. I'm going to do this again. So find the very tip. Okay, and again, I'm going to move this, take my line around the edge, and extend it to the inside just a little bit there. Okay, and I need to do the same thing on my main body tube and this will allow me to line things up even though I won't be able to see the lines once I'm trying to glue everything in place. Okay. Now usually I do the shock cord as one of the final parts of the assembly but since I'm still waiting for the super glue on the outriggers to dry we can go ahead and put this in. It won't interfere with anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the regular SD shock cord mount here. Um, just because using the slit method, the, the drawback to it is you get a bulge. And I don't want that on this model. It's going to be hard to hide. So we just put a film of glue down. I'm going to set this at a little bit of an angle. And then once again we simply put each number over the next one. So one over two. Two over three. And put those two bits of shot cord next to each other. All right, squeeze everything around. I'm going to add just a little more glue here. And then this is going to go down the forward end of the main body tube as far as I can make it reach. Now we need to at least clear the shoulder space. And here, if you got long, skinny fingers, this is a lot easier. Okay, if you can't quite reach far enough down, you can use a dowel or a handle like this. Let's actually let's see if I squish it down a little bit more. Well, it'll clear, just clear the shoulder of the nose cone there. It's, I prefer to get it further down, but it's just not cooperating today. But it's good enough. And I can simply, for now, wrap this up and stuff it in there. And it'll be out of the way. My cyanoacrylate glue is hardened now. And so now I can just take some extra fine sandpaper and just shape the edges here. And all I'm doing is removing the excess fibers. And if we had anything that was kind of poking up or out, we can do that too. It's like there's a little bit of a rough spot right in here. So if I roll up a little bit of sandpaper here, like this, we can use it to clean up those inside edges.
And if we need to, we can do a little more sanding once these are attached. That one looks pretty good. So we're getting closer to what it's going to look like there. And next thing to do is glue these on. Now again, um, if you're planning on doing these a different color, actually we're not going to glue these on yet. We're going to put the fins on them, then we're going to glue them on. Okay, and then after that, if you want to make the outrigger a different color than the main airframe here, then I would do that before you glue these on. I'm just going to make it all the same color, just for ease. Okay, so there are going to be three fins on each outrigger here, and we want the line here that we made, that'll be our glue line, this is going to go on the launch lug indicator on the three fin alignment guide because that'll actually make it directly opposite one of the fins. And so we can just go ahead and mark these in. And then we'll bring back our line guide here and draw in the fin placement. This you'll want to run about halfway up the tube because we are using the longest root edge that's possible. I now have sanded fins, and here we're just going to use the same technique that I've used in the other videos here. So we're going to put a little glue on, allow it to get tacky, and then adhere the fin. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this, apply it to the side along the line there. A little bit of excess glue, I'm going to put it down here. Okay, and now I'm going to let this get tacky for about 60 seconds. And then we'll put the fin back on there. 60 seconds has passed. So now I can just go ahead and put this back on. Alright, and we'll check to make sure it's straight, perpendicular, now remember, we do have the line here that goes all the way up. That's our glue line. We don't want fins on that. So now I allow this to dry for about 10 minutes, and then we'll go on to each successive fin. And I will come back when I've got the fins put onto both body tubes. The glue on the fins for the two outriggers is dried, and so now we simply need to apply the fillets to them. And here I'm just going to use the wood glue again and we'll run a bead along each side here. And then simply smooth those and put the excess onto the next fin. Alright, and now I'll just repeat this on the other outrigger, 
and then we'll be about ready to put the two together. Now that my fin fillets are done, we're ready to put the outriggers onto the main body tube. And for this part, we're going to need a couple of clothes pins as well as one or two rubber bands. And first, I'm just going to uh, try to dry assemble this so you can see what's going on. So here, I'm going to match up the lines that I drew on both tubes. And on the aft end, I'm going to use the uh, clothes pins here to hold these on. You could also use paper clips if you don't have a clothes pin handy. And in fact, I may try both ways here to see which gives me a better uh, grip here without deforming things too much. Now note when I do this, the fronts come off, and so that's why we need the rubber band here. All right, and my rubber bands are fairly long, so I'm going to double them to begin with. And so this is going to fit over. And again, we're going to line up the lines here. And you may have to pull it apart just a little bit to see your line. And I had marked the insides of these, but it looks like my markings came off when I sanded this. So we can always remark those. All right, so when this is put together properly, okay, you'll see that the fin tips just touch against each other here. And so if we look at this head on, it looks something like that. Okay. Now I'm going to also get some paper clips here and we'll see if that works as well or better than the clothes pins. And then once we figure out the best way to hold this into place, we'll go ahead and glue it together. So I found a few alternatives here. Uh, so in place of the clothes pins, we can try a paper clip here. And this is a standard size paper clip. And here we just need to make sure that we can keep them aligned like that. Okay, maybe you have to make a slight adjustments to get the fins where they belong. Okay, so that's a possibility if you don't have clothes pins available, but you have paper clips. And then something else I thought of, if you've got spare alligator clips from your launch box for your launch system like this, that may work as well. Now I'm going to try also here, I'm going to remove the rubber band for this. Right, I'm going to line these up once more. Right, these are little micro alligator clips that you would normally use for attaching to igniter leads. Okay, so I'll put one there. Now these have the advantage that they don't deform the body tubes as much. And here, I'll stretch out my rubber band a little bit more so it's not pulling quite as tightly on here. The main thing I'm worried about with the rubber band is if one side is tighter than the other, it's going to pull the tubes into an area we don't want. Okay, so if I hold this um, in place, and I may have to do this for a few minutes while the glue sets, but overall I like that result there. And the igniter clips seem to be the best choice if you have them. Not everybody's going to have spare igniter clips handy. So from here, I think we can go ahead and add the glue. Now one thing I'm going to do is remark the inside of my tubes here with my line. So it's easier to line them up. Okay. 
Okay. Alright, so now I'm just going to take my wood glue here. I'm going to apply the glue to the outrigger and I'm going to be kind of conservative on the glue this time, not too generous here. Just a fairly narrow bead. Okay, and that's going to go on here. I can line up my lines. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other outrigger. Place that here. Now we may even be able to get away with just leaving it upright. We may not have to clamp it. I'm going to put a paper towel under here just so I don't glue it to my mat. Okay, now the key here is going to be getting everything straight to begin with. And that looks pretty darn close. I can do this gently. Okay. Make sure the lines are lining up on both ends. And I think that will stay just that way. Um, if you do this with white glue, you may actually still have to use one of the clamping methods I showed you here. But the wood glue is sitting up fast enough that everything is looking pretty good. The glue between the outriggers is mostly dry here. It's not completely yet. But it's set up rather nicely. Um, there's a little bit of a discrepancy between the where the fins uh, almost touch here and, and don't quite almost touch here. Um, and if that's really important to you, you can actually give a little bit of bending to the fins here um, one way or the other okay, and get those to meet. Uh, if you want, you could even glue the tips there so that they remain that way. And that's kind of up to your personal taste and how you want this to look. Now we will put some fillets in here. And I'm going to use white glue to help uh, it sink down further in between the two tubes there. And we still need launch lugs on this. And so I'm going to use two launch lugs and make them look like they're actually part of the design itself. So I've got one there. And then here's another launch lug. So we should have two since these came from two kits. And I'm going to place those right about there. And it's just going to look like maybe a, a, a missile tube or some other sort of weapon mount or something like that. Um, or if you want to make this kind of look like a, a research vessel, maybe these are instrument pods however you want to do it. Um, if you had even more launch lugs, depending on how many of these projects you've done, you might have some spares. You could put them on each side. I'll right. probably put mine something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and add the fillets and then glue on the launch lugs. And then pretty much that will be done except for the painting. Um, I have not added the streamer here, but all we have to do is tape that onto the shock cord, and that would be pretty much finished. Now, 
my launch lugs are dried on now and the glue is hardened and you can see here I've put on a very thin coat of primer and one of the things that does much to my consternation is it shows up the imperfections in my fillets so areas that I couldn't quite tell if they were open bubbles or closed with a membrane of glue now very much show up as open okay so that I can go through and repair those touch them up but this is essentially finished. Um, I did take some gel type super glue and just tack the points here of the vertical stabilizers together and that gives it a more uniform look and overall I'm very pleased with the outcome. So I'm going to finish painting the, this over the next several days but for the purposes of this video this is done. So I hope your build comes out the way you want it to. Have a good launch and a good flight.